Well guys, it's questions and answers day, so we'll try and get through some of the uh, questions that we get asked. Um, one of uh, our subscribers actually turned around and said, Graham, you're a lucky old dog. Your wife is just gorgeous. The big question is, um, does she have a sister? Pi, do you have any sisters? No. No sister, eh? No. Oh, only a brother? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> You're out of luck. <laughs> if I had a dollar, just one dollar, for every time somebody asked me that question, I'd be out of retire. <laughs> she is, um, in my view, extremely pretty. And she's such a good-hearted soul. She's like her son. Fam just takes right after her. Not a bad bone in her body. Kind, considerate, and always thoughtful, you know. I couldn't, um, I couldn't want any more uh, in a companion. That's a fact. Um, she is just not only my wife, but my uh, my best friend, and I am, as you say, a lucky old dog. <laughs> I am. There's no denying it. Oh, well, the sun's uh, being hidden behind a bank of clouds, so it's um, it's still very, very hot, but nowhere near as hot as it could be if that sun was out yesterday or oh, it was a scorcher I do like it though no complaints no complaints at all just love the heat somebody asked me about my uh, about our tent you know how much was it and what is it um, it's actually listed as a four-man tent. <laughs> now, I'm not a big guy, as you know. Uh, you know, five-five at best, five-six at a stretch. Uh, Pie is obviously about five-seven, five-eight, and little fam. Now, if there's us three in the tent, it's overcrowded, so it's not a four-man tent. If you remember in a previous video, when we first bought it, we set it up in the farm and we camped out that night, and it rained, and we got wet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's um. Made in China, <laughs> say no more. Uh, the cost of the tent was 400 baht. So yeah, it was massive, I mean, but yeah, what do you expect? Well, my, uh, my father-in-law went out yesterday and got himself a cow. They shared it between several people, but he ended up with six kilos of beef for a thousand baht. That's six kilos for uh, 35 US dollars. I mean, that's a bargain. But you get the bones and all sorts and they've cut a lot of it up now and uh, there's there's the leg, look. Yeah, and Pie now, she's uh, trying to put a load of it in the freezer. Good, eh? Six kilos for a thousand bites, that's a bargain. This one, meat, half bone, half everything. This one, tank. See what I mean? It can be pretty cheap up here. I'm having to hold my mic at the moment. I've uh, I lost a little a lapel clip on it, so uh, I've got to find a way to put it on. I put a, on a little um, safety pin, so uh, yeah, trials and trials and tribulations of vlogging. I'm going, it's going to see if I can make an escape today up to uh, Chengzhen town. It's not too busy out here at the moment, so uh, no water throwing at, at the moment. Nice night at the farm though. Oh, it was lovely there last night. Got a lovely breeze coming through, just beautiful. Fed all the fish this morning and everybody's happy. And Dad and his mate right now are drinking some lao cow. And um, raw beef, they're eating raw beef. They put a little bit of sauce and, little bit of, uh, sauce and chili in there. It don't get no fresher than that. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Well, there's quite a strong wind picking up now, and as you can see, it's getting pretty cloudy. We might be in for some rain. You can see all the ripples on the water. It is getting pretty windy. Still really hot though, and it's lovely out here. Just lovely. Oh, I bet you're cursing me right now. You're thinking, oh, here I am stuck in a train, car, bus, or in the office, and there's him out there fishing. What's that about? <laughs> lovely, isn't it? I oh, just love it. I would never swap this life, I just wouldn't, I don't care. It's just um, absolutely fabulous. And I've just caught another fish, but it got off. Oh no, 
tragedy. <laughs> Just a second, I've got to untangle my line. Now I normally get Pi to untangle my line because I can't really see it, but I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> Well, that took me 10 minutes to get that untangled. I know what you're thinking. Serves you right for such a good time. <laughs> oh, somebody asked me a question. What software do I use? Editing. Uh, I use Filmora. Uh, I've been told, though, the best one I could go for would uh, be uh, Adobe Premiere. There's an issue. If you're thinking about vlogging, um, the issue with editing, of course, it takes up a huge amount of processing power. So you're going to need a PC that can really handle it. My advice on this really is to um, have a look at this, the minimum spec requirements and then almost double it. The, the word on the street is that Premiere Pro is pretty much uh, the top dog on the shelf um, for PC based uh, computers. Uh, for Mac, um, it appears to be Final Cut Pro. So take a look at both. If you're on a Mac, um, take a look at Final Cut. And if you're on a PC, take a look at uh, Pre Adobe Premiere. You can actually get Adobe Premiere for Mac as well. So um, yeah, see how you get on. And again, check your check your PC um, setup to make sure that uh, it's okay. Excuse me whilst I'm not looking here, I'm just casting my rod. <laughs> yeah, lovely, isn't it? Just lovely. Somebody actually asked me a really strange question. He actually said, Graham, a bit concerned. You know, how is this YouTube crisis affecting your uh, ad revenue? If you don't know what happened, let me just quickly explain. Um, Wall Street Journal wrote an article about advertisements appearing on some very, very questionable uh, YouTube videos. The offshot of it was that um, Wall Street Journal ended up contacting a lot of very large companies saying, did you know your advertisements appearing on, say, terrorist related um, content? And they said, no, we didn't. And um, over a hundred um, companies ended up pulling all their ads Word on the street is that um, YouTube lost uh, three quarters of a billion dollars in ad revenue. So um, the result of this, of course, is YouTube's been panicking a, a wee bit and, and basically they're demonetizing any channel that um, is even remotely offensive. For instance, if you use foul language, they'll, um, they'll demonetize your, uh, your video or entire channel, it depends. Um, it has had a knock-on effect to us, so I'm not gonna deny it. We've lost about 40% of our revenue. But I think a lot of that comes down to the, the, there's less advertisers. You know, you've got this huge infantry of, um, you know, creator content and yet very few advertisers advertise, um, wanting to appear. So, yeah, we, we've taken a bit of a pounding. It might turn around. We're just going to have to wait and see. But no, uh, Pi and I are not going to give up vlogging. It's, um, you know, it's our primary source right now. And it, the, the bottom line really is for us, a little bit is better than nothing at all. This is one of the reasons why Patreon has become so um, popular amongst uh, vloggers, the, the small vloggers like Pi and I, people who do end up supporting the creation of our content through Patreon, of course, um, you know, really does help boost uh, the income. Life can be cruel at times, but you know, it's, again, you know, it's no good worrying about it. You've got to stay positive in what you do. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it in the first place. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll soldier on. We've got food on the table. So, uh, but yeah, it's had a bit of an impact, but it's not, you know, it's not devastating. Still keep an arm afloat. <laughs> When are you and Pi going to go up to uh, Doi Tung Mountain? We'd like to have another look. Oh, we'd, we're itching to do it, but we've got to get Songkhan out of the way. Um, I really don't want to be driving um, in the uh, New Year Festival. It can be pretty dangerous. It's, uh, I mean, the government uh, listed it as the seven deadly days. So basically, we're going to stuff the roads just for a few days. It's, it'll just be easier. But once... Uh, once the song grand period's finished, uh, oh, what's this space? We're uh, we're definitely going to uh, be out and about a little bit more. Another good question I often get asked: Is it uh, easy to find rental accommodation here in uh, Chiang Rai? When I was in Phuket, you could drive anywhere and see signs on the gate for rent for sale. Uh, it was a breeze. Up here, I've seen very very little of it. I've seen a few pieces of land here for sale. You get signs out saying for sale, but not. For rental accommodation there are however um, quite a few good websites uh, if you go onto Google and type in Chiang Rai real estate uh, there's just have a look at the the, the first three listings there um, they're pretty good websites and there's lots to choose from I will say this 
I often find with websites um, that the prices are a little bit steeper and the reason being of course is because the, the, the people that are renting know that the agent's going to take a cut so the price is bumped up. How much it's bumped up by I really don't know but I'm you know there are times I look at some of the listings and think no that's, you know it's well overpriced. I've seen apartments for, for 10,000 baht a month. I've seen sort of five, six bedroom villas for 60, 70,000 baht a month. And I've seen some very, very nice little sort of um, modern contemporary style homes in the middle of nowhere uh, for sort of 20, 25,000 baht a month. I recently saw one, it was 25,000 baht a month. It was three bedrooms, uh, new build. Um, it's kind of contemporary, you know, the kitchen was a bit basic, and, and but the location was absolutely stunning and it was sort of elevated halfway up a hillside and of course you look down into the valley and then the mountain on the other side. It was stunning. Um, you know, when you put this in perspective of Western terms, you know, you're looking at um, 25,000 baht, it's approximately, what, 550 pounds, I guess. Um, it's not massively expensive for what you're getting. If you're really into solitude, peace and quiet, and of course, stunning scenery, then uh, Chiang Rai just uh, it has got it in abundance. I mean, there's just bucket loads of it. And there are some beautiful properties out there. Uh, again, you know, remember if you're ever thinking about buying it as a foreigner, you, you cannot own the land, so it becomes very, very difficult. And my advice will always be um, rent it. It's just so much easier. And yes, if you look online, there's uh, there's quite a bit of it and some of it is stunning. Well, today is officially Songkhan. It's the number 13 and that's their new year. There you go. <laughs> the locals are out. He's out with his two mates again here. Splashing water as, as they go by. They love it. He missed though. <laughs> Try and get another one. Oh, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a good time. Now this is traditionally what happens. A bunch come on motorbikes and then they get absolutely soaked. And of course, they, these lot are so drunk they wouldn't even know their own names by now. Now as you can see, it's the way Song Grand goes. The adults all get drunk and the kids like playing water. but they do have a good time, bless you. Is alcohol expensive? That's another thing I've been asked on a few occasions. Really depends on what you drink. Um, the local beer, no, it's pretty cheap. Things like Chang, Singer, Leo. When you look at Western alcohol, yes, it's uh, really expensive. A bottle of Jack Daniels will cost you uh, close to 50 pounds. Uh, a bottle of Gordon's gin, for instance, probably 20 pounds. It is, um, yeah, it's import tax. So if you, if you want to consume it, then you're gonna have to pay for it. Wine is another thing. You know, a bottle of wine that set you back five pounds in the UK will probably set you back 15 to 20 pounds here. Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a downer. I really used to enjoy having a dram buey over ice after dinner. Oh, lovely. But you know, when you're looking at only 60 pounds a bottle, yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And again, you know, port. I used to love putting together a cheese board with a bottle of port. Um, oh, lovely. But again, you know, really, really expensive. It really comes down to what I said in a previous video about the cost of living here. The cost really will always come down to your lifestyle, what you want. You know, if you want to live in a small little apartment at two and a half thousand baht a month, or you want to live in a five bedroom villa with a pool at 60, 70,000 baht a month, it really, you know, it's really down to the individual. Okay, honey? Yeah. Yeah, you ready to go home? Yeah. Yeah. Right, guys, we're going to head on home. I've got some editing to do. You've got some cooking to do. <laughs> hungry. I'm always hungry. Well, that's about all, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, wherever you do, have a fantastic day and stay safe. Bye for now, guys. Oh, it is a bit, um, a bit cloudy up on the mountains. <laughs>